talk about how Berkeley Hills has helped them to bloom. And so we'll show that video in just one second. I do wanna offer an update on um, uh, Kathleen Bright. She, uh, she's had a pretty good week and um, is doing uh, a little bit better. She's had lots of doctor's appointments and they're adjusting medication and things like that. So um, continue your prayers uh, for Kathleen and Pastor Scott. And uh, if, if you're on the phone with him, she's always in the background saying, I'm good, I'm good. So <laughs> we'll take her at her word, but do please continue your prayers. Um, all right, so um, we'll watch that Spring into Bloom uh, video at this time. I invite you to stand for the procession. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord Jesus, your love knows no limits. You meet us on our life's journey with healing and forgiveness. Strengthen us so that we may more faithfully follow your gospel, and so celebrate the feast of your resurrection with joy. Amen. Let us confess together. Eternal God, in whom we live and move and have our being, whose face is hidden from us by our sins and whose mercy we forget in the blindness of our hearts, cleanse us from all our offenses and deliver us from proud thoughts and vain desires, that with reverent and humble hearts 
we may draw near to you, confessing our faults, confiding in your grace, and finding in you a refuge and strength. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. By the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, all your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray together. Holy and righteous God, you are the author of life, and you adopt us to be your children. Fill us with your words of life, that we may live as witnesses to the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. It's time for the children's sermon. So I brought with me today a dinner plate. And this dinner plate has pictures of Legos on it. At our house, we love Legos. We like to build and design things and make things out of Legos. And Legos are really cool because they, they click together, right? They stick together, and um, unless you take them apart, they'll be there forever, right? And the reason I like this dinner plate with Legos on it is because of the way that when Jesus shares a meal with us, it is, it is a way that he connects to us. It's a way that he gets us to click together with him. So we know that at the Last Supper, he gave us a meal of bread and wine. We call that Holy Communion. And that meal that we share every Sunday here and at home is a way that Jesus connects with us calls us together, gathers us up, and connects us to our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's also a way that Jesus connects us to each other. Jesus uses meals and connects us to each other as the body of Christ. And um, this is super important, that we are connected to each other as much as we're connected to Jesus. And so it, we're like Legos too. We click together and we stay together. But not just with like the people here and the people at home, but every Christian around the world is connected and, and stuck together in Jesus Christ through his holy meal. Now, like things are different right now, right? And um, we used to just have communion here at church and that's the only place you could basically get it. But now we have communion at home. And I think as different as that is for us, where people can take communion at home or in church, it, it says something wonderful about the way God works, right? It's what Jesus does, not what we do, that really counts. And it's the meal is Jesus' gift to us. And so it's, it's a great reminder that um, Jesus is doing this meal and giving it to us and bringing us together in ways that we can't even imagine sometimes. So I just want you to think about how we are connected and um, brought together through Jesus, through the meal. Um, in the story that we hear about Jesus today, we're going to hear about how he uh, asks for a piece of fish and eats it. And it's a really important time when the disciples are trying to figure out what it means for Jesus to be resurrected or raised from the dead, um, that he would say, let's eat together. So Jesus connects us through the meal. Amen. The first readings from the third chapter of Acts. Peter addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Why do you stare at us 
as though by your own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Second reading is from 1 John. See what you love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us as it, as it is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this, when he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have hope this, have this hope in him, purity, purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has either seen him or known him. Little children, let no one deceive you. Everyone who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus himself stood among the disciples and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy, they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So I've been been thinking a lot about something uh, with regards to the resurrection, and I, I start to wonder, I've started to wonder if the most significant aspect of Jesus showing up isn't the miracle of the resurrection, it isn't um, in the conquering of death, it isn't in the empty tomb, but the most significant thing that happens is Jesus showing up in person, literally in person, with holes in his hands, 
walking on broken feet, flesh and bones and breath. It was, it was terrifying and tremendous. So when we get to um, the reading for today, people always ask why Jesus eats in their presence. Why does he ask for fish and then eat it? And it's as the disciples are still in their joy, but still disbelieving and wondering that he eats in front of them. There is something terribly significant to Jesus being there fully in the flesh, not just appearing, but being fully himself, broken and healed, dead and alive, divine and yet still human. Why? Why is this so significant? And, and eating is a sign of him being fully there in the person with the same needs that we have. So to me, this, this says that there's something that grounds us and holds us to this life when Jesus doesn't just toss it all aside for something better. I think at least part of this means that, that this life matters. We matter. What we do with our hands and our feet and our bodies and minds and breath matter. We, in our humanity and our earthly life, matter to God. And that means something. So I want to show you one of my favorite Calvin and Hobbes cartoons, because I think it kind of talks a little bit about this. This is one of my favorites. So here's Calvin and Hobbes standing in the middle of a sidewalk. And Calvin says, let's say life is this square of sidewalk. We, we uh, were born at this crack, and we die at that crack. Now, how we now we find ourselves somewhere inside the square. And in the process of walking out of it, suddenly we realize our time in here is fleeting. Is our quick experience here pointless? Does anything we say or do in here really matter? Have we done anything important? Have we been happy? Have we made the most? of these precious few footsteps. Calvin is a very deep thinker and a deep theologian who often brings to light our own concerns, and he and Hobbes ponder deep into the night the nature of this existence and what we do with it, the importance of what we do with this life. Does anything we say or do in here really matter? So I saw a video this week that I think starts to answer that question.
One step must start each journey. One word must start each prayer. One hope will raise our spirits. One touch can show you care. One voice can speak with wisdom. One heart can know what's true. One life can make a difference. You see, it's up to you. Does anything we say or do in here really matter? Yes, it does. So these steps are in Stillwater, Minnesota. By the looks of it, online, they climb forever. It's like some extreme sport to go all the way from downtown up to the top of the town. Uh, I know Pittsburgh has a lot of steps and a lot of steep steps, but these seemed like even more. And, and people really do take on the challenge. But what I like about these steps is what has happened to them over the last four or five years. A, daughter, a, a woman and her daughter have taken it upon themselves to, to raise people up in more than elevation. Annie and her mom have made it their mission to raise people's spirits and thoughts and hearts with inspirational messages written on the steps. So when you pass them by or you start to climb, you'll see messages like, love more, dream big, you matter, hope, be kind, just endless thoughts of ways to inspire and and raise people up. Annie herself, the little girl, uh, thinks up the messages, and then her mom writes them on the steps, and Annie adds her own artwork. Their goal is to spread kindness and bring encouragement to the people of their community, and their story after story on Facebook of how it has made a difference in people's lives as they go through difficult times and as they struggle and as they seek direction. They'll pass the steps and read the messages and be lifted up. Annie's mom has taken this over the years to the next level and started her own nonprofit effort called You Matter. And this is through Facebook spread worldwide and she makes up You Matter kits to send to people who want to start their own efforts in their own communities. And again, all they want to do is spread kindness and lift people up and help them to take that step that leads them to something more and something better for their lives. The steps you take matter. So have we done anything important? Have we been happy? How have we made the most of these precious few steps? Does what we do matter? Of course. It's by the power of the resurrection that brings us into new life. It's by the grace of God's forgiveness to give us new opportunities each and every day. And it's by the full presence of Christ in our midst that while in our joy, in our disbelief, and in our wonder, we are witnesses of these things with our lives. Amen.
Please stand for the Nicene Creed. Living together as one body in Christ, we confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge living and dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look to the resurrection of the dead, the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated for the prayers. Alive in the risen Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God who promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. God of our salvation. God of all, the nations hunger and thirst for your righteousness. Many call on you for guidance and strength. Answer their hopes with the peace of Christ and give your loving kindness to national, state, and local leaders of people. God of our salvation. Yes. Healing God, you hear the cries of those in need and answer them in their distress. Grant to those who are sick and suffering your compassion and nurse them back to health and wholeness, especially those on our prayer list. Be close to the hearts of the lonely. Hear us, O oh God, God of our salvation. Yes. Loving parent, you have given us such love that we should be called the children of God. Reveal yourself to us so that we in this community of faith will become more and more like you in our mutual love and bold witness, God of our salvation. God of all times and ages, those who have died in you now see you as you are. We thank you for their lives and assure us of the peace you have promised that we may join them in everlasting life. God of our salvation. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, amen. Lord of life, through this meal, you put gladness in our hearts, satisfy the hunger still around us, and send us as a joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
please stand. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen and brings us new life. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We give you thanks because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection, Jesus has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Alleluia. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit, to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Alleluia. You may be seated. We join in singing, Now All the Vault of Heaven Resounds.
For those who are receiving Holy Communion at home, I invite you to take your bread. This is the body of Christ given for you. And now your cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. I now invite those who are in church to come forward. The table is ready.